my fellow colorists and mixed media artists and welcome back to part two of my birthday haul. Um, this part will focus more on the supply side as my previous video has the full flip through of all the coloring books that I picked up for my birthday. The only thing that's not here yet is four more issues of Created Haven my new light for filming and um, a tool for my gel press, uh, texture combs, and a tube of paint. So let's get rolling into the haul because there's lots of stuff. Um, just know that this is not to boast uh, about what I've gotten for my birthday. I just want to show you what I'm stocking the studio with and maybe this might be something that you don't have in your studio. Um, not only that, I want to share my love of art supplies with you and all the great things that I will be using and a lot of this will be for projects for future videos. So um, I will be using all of these new supplies and videos. Um, more directed on the mixed media side, but there is, I also have some stuff for uh, adult coloring too. So let's get into, this stencil is going to be quite hard. Here, let me pull the black. I haven't really completely opened these yet, so sorry for the noise. I'll take the black out of here. So. I have two, or if you can see it better here, I have a 6x6 six six honeycomb stencil from the crafters, the crafters workshop. So definitely can use this on backgrounds um, in your coloring books and your art journal pages. Um, this one's actually um, a peacock style one that I got. So I am excited to be using those in my art journals and coloring books. Uh, this next one here is like a ladder and this is from Jelly Arts and this is an 8x10 stencil. Sorry, can't talk. Gotta love it when so yeah, and there's nothing, and this is, I have an 8x10 jelly plate, so this is the perfect size to do some mono printing off of. <clears throat> then watching jelly plate videos, I saw these, these are two, um, what are they? They're like mandala stencils, but they, they call this, um... I think the early morning sunrise and these are 12 by 12 and there's a pack of two in this one and then this one is a really interesting flower design so I think this is going to be cool on the gel plate so and you will see a video of me actually demonstrating using all of these stencils here probably within the next couple weeks so, next thing I got, which is kind of hard here, I'll bring it closer, is a Duragloss varnish. This was recommended by another mixed media artist, Karen Campbell, and talked about um, this is for when you finalize your mixed media pieces to protect them. So this is a polyurethane gloss varnish, and this is like your last layer of what you put on your painting or art journal page, um, whatever substrate you use for your mixed media. I also picked up Sargent Art Acrylic Matte Medium. This is a glue. Um, you can use that for glue or you can paint over it to remove glare in, uh, with acrylic paint because acrylic paint does have a 
like a, a glare because it's made out of plastic and other materials so sometimes you don't want that gloss so you want to this helps you can put it over that um, or you can glue down your collage pieces in your different layers so I got that right, other thing I've already put them in my little coffee can is the color your world uh, skin tone fine tip water-based Crayola markers and there's 24 in the set here I took them all out of the box and I picked these up and which I, I'm gonna pick up the broad tip too uh, for in my coloring books laying down a marker base for my skin tones and um, kind of speeding up the coloring process since I primarily use a lot of color pencils so hopefully that this will help uh, speed up for the skin tones. I do have the color pencils too in another set that I will sometimes pull out because some sets don't have enough skin tones so I do have those there in another copy can in another drawer. <laughs> The next thing I have here is, this is a broken gelato that I kind of saved the pieces out of it to use dry, but I picked up the, let's see here, uh, Faber-Castell uh, Pastel Gelatos um, for doing backgrounds, watercolor effects, uh, working in my art journal for shading because they are water-based medium over my acrylic uh, work in my acrylic drawings in my art journal which I am definitely getting into the art journal um, I don't have I didn't do any swatching but if you'd like to see me swatch these uh, shoot me a comment and I will create a, another video of just swatching the new product the gelatos and my open stock pencils and the color, if you want me to swatch the color your world marker too, just let me know. The next thing I got on my list is I bought replacements for my Color Soft Open Stock. So I had a few of them when I got my my tin that when I sharpened them I had some issues, and so I picked up replacements for those. And then I also picked up a brown and a pale brown because I used them up when I was working on a Kirby page. So I got these open stock at Wet Paint, which is a fabulous art store in St. Paul, Minnesota. And then I also bought one, two, three, six, seven different random. Um, colors of the polychromos which I'm in love with how smooth they lay down which here I will get you get a piece of scrap paper and show you bring it in a little bit here so you can see we'll just um, swatch these so this first color is ivory which is going to be really, I don't have any tone paper in front of me. You won't be able to see that very much. This would be a good um, start of a skin tone color if you have the background of an Asian because they have a yellow undertone in their skin. So the ivory would be great for a first layer. This next one is terracotta. These are oil based, um, so they definitely go down a lot creamier and smoother because of the oil, and they are highly pigmented. So that was the terracotta. This next one is coral. I definitely can't wait to get the full set but the full set is almost $200 so I have to save for that but I've just been randomly buying open stock so.
this color is Mang Mang Mayonnaise Violet. Don't know if I'm saying that right. If I'm not, please forgive me. And I'm just doing these really quick. So and then I also have a beige red. Like I said, I didn't know what colors to choose to try out, so I just grabbed a couple. Um, I'm learning how to do skin tone, so the, the violet um, is a little bit off for skin tone. It was just, I love violet, or I love purple, so I was just like, yeah, I'll try purple. And this one is a raw umber. Also have an Alarzen Crimson. This is the last color, which is a beautiful red. So I'll kind of bring that up to you a little bit here. Oh, look at that! Aren't those colors gorgeous? Yeah, they make this girl happy. So I can't wait to get the full set and use them on a big coloring page. I will swatch out the color softs just so you get an idea. One of them I have to sharpen. Here, sorry. So I got a replacement blush pink. In the the color stuffs are a harder wax base than the Prisma colors. Um, the only thing is the color soft does not have the range of the Prisma colors. They only have a 72 count range. The next color is mid green. So. Um, so that's the only like uh, con of the color softs, but I'm not a fan of Prisma colors because of how they do their leads and stuff, and their cores break constantly because of how soft and smooshy they are. And I like to be able to hold my point longer and layer to smooth out my colors. And this is pale brown. And we just have a brown here. These are just replacements. On this side is the color softs. So. so yeah. And then the gelatos are, here I'll just swatch a couple colors. I won't swatch the full 15. And the gelatos have like a creamy, like a lipstick texture, which that's the bottom three there. Those are pretty cool colors. Now you can use your finger to blend them. You can use water to activate them and make it look like a watercolor effect, or you can just use it straight gelato without the water. So it's, there's plenty of options. So that is the 
the Faber-Castell gelatos. So, next we have, and this is something that my mom got me with a coloring book, um, is, you can, oh, I gotta zoom out. Duh, Amanda, you can't see what it is when you zoom in. That. So this is a uh, LED light box. So I if you want to use watercolor for certain images and you want to take an image out of your coloring book, you can trace it on tracing paper and then tape the tracing paper down and this will illuminate up on a watercolor piece of paper and you can uh, put water but just remember when you're doing that you cannot sell that as finished artwork at all but it's a good way to practice your watercolor skills by doing that um, and certain techniques and things like that before you do your but before you do your own final artwork pieces that you can sell so this is a great drawing tool so I got this I also picked up printer paper for the gel print pro project that I'm in the works getting everything together so for the mixed media side so this is just regular printer paper we are going to make collage sheet backgrounds I also got an 11 and a half 11 by 8 and a half um, acid free 25% cotton 212 GSM nature sketchbook for my art journal. Um, this is, you can use it with pen, ink, pencil, acrylics, pastels, and watercolor. So, um, watercolor will buckle this because it's only 125, or it's only 25% cotton. So there is a mix of wood pulp in here. So, one trick you'll have to do is, after you do use water medium, you're going to have to dry the page out and then you can iron the page to return flattening. You're still going to have the crinkle in it, but at least you will be able to get a flat piece of paper by using your iron. Next thing is in these bins. So I picked up these leftover rose petals from Valentine's really cheap for collage for a different kind of texture um, or even using them on the gel plate and creating a stencil or just creating some different effects of different things to print with and then I also picked up from Tim Holtz didn't realize how small the package was going to be but these are all stitched scraps so in various different stitching sizes for collage different types of fabric like this one's felt this feels like it's a burlap um, this is just back and forth on another burlap piece which when my mom comes this summer I'm gonna see if I can have her make me uh, she brings her sewing machine with her um, have her make me more stitch scraps like this so out of when she does all of her sewing because she loves to quilt and make aprons and all that. I'm sorry if my hand is in the way, but yeah. So that is for collage media too. The next couple drawers here are collage uh, packs, paper packs of like scrap paper and different textures, but this particular collage pack came from wet paint and then there's some from the other one too in here but um, there is some really neat interesting paper this paper is a homemade paper from Nepal and I just to feel it the texture and everything is just awesomely amazing um, this one is really cool because it's got string in it and stuff so I was able to use some of it when I got it from the art store that I got all the open stock pencils for the art meetup. I mean just random colors, cardboard, I mean 
really heavy textured cardstock. I'm assuming this might be uh, watercolor paper just because of the smoothness. Um, not sure, but yeah. So just like random bits of scrap paper. Um, this looks like it's a piece of wallpaper from a sample or something because it's got that wood grain. But I was just so impressed with the homemade papers that were in the set. I can't wait to go back and get another bag um, and go back to wet paint. I have, these are some things out of my own collection. I have music pages, um, stuff from people that I went to a journaling meetup. Here's more of that homemade. So just all kinds of random bits and doodads and papers and textures and different things you can do. Um, this also came in there as more like that. So that is one package that I got. And then in this lovely drawer, I picked up two packages of different colors and random scraps. Uh, it was um, by the scrapbook page section, scrapbook paper, sorry, not page, in Walmart and their crafts. Really cheap, like under, I think it was like three bucks a bag. And that's the same thing. There's lots of scraps, different colors, different styles, different textured, um, card stock style. Um, I think there was like some that had like an embossed edge. I mean, folded differently. Um, let's see, different like random colors. I don't know, there are all kinds of neat papers that you could tear apart, collage. I mean, you can't go wrong with a pre-packaged scrap drawer, basically. So, which I'm going to be using some of this paper when I create my postcards for the group. And that is it, guys. This is the end of the second part. I honestly want to say thank you so much for watching, and I appreciate everybody. I cannot say enough about the support, the love, the nice comments, everything, the people, all of you watching and hitting the like button and subscribing. I am just blown away. I mean, this is just a, a way for me to connect because I've felt isolated for the last two years and I'm thankful for social media and I'm thankful for this platform. And honestly, I look forward to chatting with you all in the comments. And and I also look forward to coloring with you all and creating art. So I hope that you have a fabulous evening. Happy coloring, happy art journaling. And please take care of yourself and take care of your mental health. And love your neighbors. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Every little bit helps me. See you soon. Bye.